Good morning, everybody. It's just a little bit before 7 a.m. here in Chicago, 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Beautiful sunrise over the lake today. Today I'm at the end of week three of my Shamrock Shuffle 8K training program. On the menu for today is a fart luck, two mile warm up, 10 times two minute on, one minute off at about 8K or race pace to maybe 5K pace. And a one minute jog, do that 10 times, and a three mile cool down. I'm very cold, feet are freezing, everything else is fine, just the feet a little bit cold because I've got the dancing shoes on today. Hopefully, the path will stay clear the entire time. Well, let's get in some good VO2 max work. Let's go. Just finished the third rep. Whew. I'm having a hard time dialing in the pace. I'm all over the place. I'm just not very familiar with this level of effort. Whew. All right. Six reps in, oh, four more to go. I was originally thinking I'll take a gel here, but it's cold and these rests are short. I just don't feel like it. I'm gonna keep going. Oh. Ten reps completed today for the fart lex session. Two minutes on, one minute off, and then after that, a four-mile cooldown, bringing us back home. And now we're inside. And what I wanted to do today is take a look at the data. So we'll be looking at my data in Polar Flow, how I normally tend to look at my data after a run to see if the workout, which was supposed to be a VO2 max workout today. Uh, achieved what I was supposed to achieve. So let's back up first and talk about what VO2 max is. So the idea of what VO2 max is, is when you're working pretty much kind of like as hard as you can, there's going to be a certain point where you can run harder, but your body won't be able to kind of like take in any more oxygen. So you can breathe harder and like huff and puff harder and harder and harder, but you won't get any more oxygen actually into your system. That's your V.O2 max. So how much oxygen can you maximally ingest into your system? And that's real, usually going to happen when you're kind of like really exerting yourself. So that's what kind of the VO2 max is. And the point of a VO2 max workout is, is when you're at that state, how efficient of a, of a runner are you or how much uh, power are you putting out or how much speed are you capable of putting out kind of at that max level and so the idea is that you know someone that doesn't have a lot of vo2 max training might be able to get to that vo2 max pace or that vo2 max level of exertion but they might not be that, uh, that efficient and i've kind of talked about this in some of my previous workout videos where we've been talking about i feel like i'm running hard and i'm exerting myself but it's not translating into a lot of speed what the VO2 max workout is supposed to do is make it so that way you're able to run more efficiently and translate that maximal effort into even more speed. So a lot of people talk about VO2 max kind of like as that number that your watch can kind of like give you an, uh, an estimate for, like an estimation for. Um, but I think the other thing to really think about, not only in terms of your VO2 max number, is your velocity at VO2 max. And so these VO2 max workouts are looking at increasing not only your VO2 max, but also your velocity 
at your or your pace at your VO2 max. And so the way that you do that is by spending a lot of time at that VO2 max number and getting your body uh, accustomed to that and strong, like working that out. Uh, and so that's the point of today. Now today's workout was 10 times two minutes on, one minute off. And normally, I think the kind of generally accepted like figures are that it takes you like three or four minutes to get to that VO2 max level for your heart rate to get ramped up for the amount of oxygen you're taking in to kind of hit that maximum level of oxygen that you could take in over the course of a period of time. And so a lot of people look at it a couple of ways. You can either do basically like a 5K time trial uh, and do a lot of VO2 max workout that way. But time trials can be very hard to do like frequently. So it's not something that you would do like every week, for example, um, because that very long extended work at that VO2 max level of exertion can be very tiring and taxing on the body. So what people do is these types of workouts where there's lots of intervals with very short rests and the short rests are the key part uh, of these repetitions and these workouts because then you are getting a chance to rest. So I'm getting that one minute of a recovery, but my heart rate isn't coming all the way down back to kind of like my low heart rate my or even my resting heart rate level. So at that one minute, my heart rate is still staying pretty elevated. So that way when the next rep starts, it's not starting off from like zero again or like, you know, like a, an, an easy pace uh, heart rate, but it's starting from an elevated spot so we could get closer to that max heart rate even faster. So maybe after three reps or so at that fourth rep, then you're getting very close to almost every single time right at the start, your heart rate is gonna jump right back up to kind of like that max heart rate level and you're gonna, your body's gonna be in a position to do work at that VO2 max level in a way that you're getting quality work each time, but you're getting a quality number of minutes at that level of exertion without it being as strenuous as say like a 5K time trial could be. So that was the point of the workout today. Let's take a look at the data to see how I did it. So I had it set up in my watch so that way it would handle like all the, the rest in the work phases. So it's all broken out for me. Um, and we could take a look at it a couple of ways. First, let's look at, I'll show you the kind of like the heart rate that I was talking about. Um, so if we look at the first one, we could see this, this graph up at the top is my heart rate. And you can see for the first one, it takes a little bit for the heart rate to kind of catch up to the level of exertion. If we look at my power, instantly the power is jumping up from kind of like, you know, taking it easy and all of a sudden, boom, it's on. And the power spikes up real high. Same thing with the pace. It just drops real fast. I'm at like, you know, I'm going out way too fast here, uh, a little bit faster than my mile pace. And then I kind of realize, oh, I'm going too fast. I slow down. Then I realize I'm going way too slow. So I'm playing around with it, trying to figure out what this pace is supposed to be. Um, eventually ending up somewhere in kind of like the range that I was looking for. That's what this like blue line is. Uh, I wanted to be towards the top of that kind of blue band right there. I, I think that, is that blue? Is it purple? I think it's blue. So we'll call it blue band as far as pace. But then at the top, it takes a little bit for that heart rate to catch up. And it's not really getting to the peak of what the heart rate's going to be for this rep until, um, you know, like uh, more than halfway through it. And so there, and we're only hitting like 167 uh, beats per minute. And then there's a recovery, but it's not coming all the way down to where it was before, like before I started all this work. Well, before I started all this work, I was in like the 130s. Instead, after the minute recovery, I'm at 145. After the second recovery, I'm at 153. After the third recovery, I'm at 155. So that's kind of where I'm at, in like the 150s. And then from there, I'm able to get even higher. So for the second one, I'm at 170 peaking for my heart rate, 171 peaking. 173 up here so the heart rate is getting higher and higher so I'm getting closer to that vo2 max level um, and that's where the work is really happening like the magic I guess of the workout is happening at that point so that's like really what I'm looking for and you could see that towards the end it's I'm, I'm hitting kind of the same numbers in terms of peaks the entire time uh, and then after that here's the cool down where I'm going back to just kind of like my low heart rate easy running for the cool down and then I had a little bit of extra uh, there based on the way I've kind of like just set up the run so uh, that's what like the, the graphs look like but now we could take a look at the numbers individually as well so this part uh, is a little bit harder to read but you can kind of see like there's a work phase so each of the work phase and rest phases is split up two minutes long um, duration two minutes and then and it tells you how far I ended up running in that period of time but my average heart rate for that session was only 162 I believe my max heart rate is 182 so uh, 162 that's kind of like uh, more like a marathon pace for me if I'm 
talking about averages over a long period of time. And the max for this period was 167. But to go from where I started, like in the 130s, like 140, all the way up to 167 you know, in a short amount of time, there's a lot more the, to that story than that 162 shows you. But that gives you an idea of like where that overall average level of intensity fits according to like my level of fitness. Um, and I could see that um, the power average for that was 280. Here's some other, if I click on it, I could see some of these numbers a little bit easier. Um, average heart rate 162, average pace was 626, which is just about, it's a little bit slower than my 5K pace. 626 is a 20 minute 5K. Uh, I can run a little bit faster than that, but that's about my 5K pace. So what I was thinking I needed to do for today was probably be somewhere between 626 and 615. I don't have any ability to have that kind of like fine tuning of pace. I just can't do that. I found myself either being at like 635 or 610 and like never in between is what it felt like looking at the watch. So um, that's what the average ended up being. Uh, average power was 282, which um, feels a little bit high relative to that pace. Um, but you know, I'll keep in mind that it was, you know, four degrees Fahrenheit out today. Maybe that has something to do with it, but, um, the cadence was 186. So, you know, uh, all, all seems to work out pretty good. And I can go through and look at each of these kind of individually like that. The next one, uh, 622 per minute on average, that's kind of the range that I was looking for 284 Watts, um, and 164 beats per minute average with a max of that 170. So it started at 145 and then it peaked up. It does that kind of like it looks like a wave almost, so it curls up. Uh, and I was hanging out at 170, which again, I'd like that to be higher, but um, it's uh, it's only the second rep. Then we get to rep three. The max is at 172. Pace is 612 for that one. That was a good one. I feel like that's where these all need to be. Um, there, I've looked at this data ahead of time. They're not all this good, but 290 for the power. So that's looking good. I want them all to be like that, but they're they're not. So the next one, 614, still not bad. Maxing out at 173, 287 power. So that's uh, overall, I'm liking those numbers um, for uh, like 5K-ish effort. 5K-ish, maybe a little bit faster than 5K-ish effort. Um, I'd like ideally for 626 to be my 8K pace for uh, the, the virtual race coming up in March, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Then uh, I think this is rep five, 618, and then 282 with a max heart rate of 174. So um, I'll click through them real quick so you guys can see it. We got 623, max of 173 for the heart rate. Then we got the next one at 624 per minute, so slowing down quite a bit. Uh, and that uh, max heart rate is still staying pretty high, 172. Not that close to my, I mean, that's more of a threshold heart rate for me than it is a, um, a, a max heart rate. Uh, but, you know, it starts to creep up further. We got 175 for the next one at 621 uh, pace for, for the two minutes. Um, and then uh, 621 for the next one. Again, the heart rate's up to 174. And then we got one more for the 10th one. I was at 618 with uh, 176 for that heart max heart rate. Although if we then go to the rest period, so like the rest period, the heart rate kept cruising up even though like I like eased off the gas, it maxed up out to 182. So like that's uh, finally by the last one, I was hitting that max heart rate number. So I'm thinking I wasn't too far off from like executing this workout like perfectly. Um, I think maybe some of the earlier ones, if I could have gotten those a little bit faster to kind of get up towards that, so I'm sitting at max heart rate for a little bit longer during the workout, but for the most part, I was probably around like 175 for the max of the heart rates for these sessions, uh, each of the reps. And so I think that's what, like, um, like 5%. Uh, so it's like 95% of my max heart rate. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I feel like overall uh, to underdo it versus overdoing it, underdoing it probably a little bit better in terms of trying to do an, uh, an effective VO2 max workout. So feeling pretty good about it. I definitely felt very tired the rest of the day after doing that workout. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I wasn't hurting, but it was, it was tough. I'd like to be able to do this workout again. I don't know if it comes up again in my calendar just cause I've kind of compressed, compressed the training plan a little bit to fit, uh, within the time frame of the 8k, the virtual 8k that's coming up. But this is definitely a workout that I think like having some skill at doing this workout can come into play as well. But for someone that normally doesn't spend a lot of time, uh, this amount of time at that intensity, Felt like I did a pretty good job. Overall, proud of the workout for today. And uh, I feel like I got out of it what I needed to. 
a big part of it for me was also that mental aspect of, you know, I'm going to be trying to run an 8K at a little bit slower of a pace than what I was running here today. But, um, you know, overall, if you add up all those two minute sessions, I ended up putting in uh, a little bit more than a 5K at a uh, faster than 5K race pace. So, you know, I feel like that's a good like build up kind of uh, a confidence builder of a workout for me too. So uh, important and I think overall successful on a lot of levels. So uh, I think that's all I have uh, in terms of going over the data and what we have for this workout. If you have any questions about it, um, about the whys or the what's, feel free to put them in the comments down below. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. I'd love to be able to talk to you guys there. And that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?